Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at the Google Map widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. This widget allows you to quickly and easily add Google Maps to your WordPress website. Please note, this widget works with the Google Maps service and you require an API key from them before you can display a map on your site. However, once you have that ready, you will be able to use this widget to add a map to any of your pages while being able to see how it all looks thanks to the front-end editor. This page we've been looking through offers examples of different map layouts and the various ways you can style and display your maps. It's to give you an idea of the things you can do, such as adjust display dimensions, add icons and additional contact information, all kinds of helpful things. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create this example map and exploring the options you get with this widget. Let's dive in. Head over to the back end. You can see right away I prepared the section where I plan to put my map. The first column is empty. This is where my map will go. And the second has some text content to put the map in context, so to speak. So, since I have all this ready, I can just search for the Google Map widget in the element or sidebar. There it is. Drag it over to the page. Alright, this is normal. It's what the widget looks like by default, before we've added an address for our map to display. Also, another thing you should get out of the way beforehand is the API key. And you can see this note advising you that this widget requires the API key to work and that key should be added to the integration page. Let me show you what that is. I have it open here. The integration page is where you'd add the API keys for different third-party services you want to integrate with your site. You can find this page if you go to your dashboard menu, open key add-ons for Elementor, and then click on the integration page sub-option. As you can see on this page, there are a handful of widgets within the key add-ons collection that require API keys. Right at the top, you'll find the listing for Google Maps. Simply paste the API key you get from Google Maps in here and you're free to get back to your page and carry on making your site. Ok, getting back to our map element. The first thing to do when you start to customize it is to add an address. You can display up to 4 different addresses or locations. For the example I'm making, I only need one. So I'll just add it to this field called address1. Give me a sec. Ok, there. Once you've added an address, a typical Google map will appear showing the location. So there's no particular styling by default, you get to set up whatever you like on your own. That includes the pin as well. And that's the next thing after the addresses. You can upload an image of the pin you'd like to use. We recommend using the PNG format to keep the pin looking its best on a map. I'll use this one that I added to my media library. Ok. And there it is. It appeared on the map right away. And that's the pin sorted. Super quick. After that, we have the map height option. Simply add a numerical value for the number of pixels you want. Like so. And under that, you can adjust the map zoom. This is basically how close up your map will be shown. A larger number means the map will be more focused. Let me show you. The default is 12 and I'll set 15. There. And we have a much closer view of the area around our address. You can set an even higher value, but 15, maybe 16, provides a pretty close-up view as it is. In fact, I'd like to give my visitors a bit of a wider overview, so I'll set 13 here. Alright, there we go. Also, please note, this option works only when you have one address. If you enter multiple addresses, the default zoom from Google Maps will be applied instead. This is done so that all the addresses you add can fit within your assigned map dimensions. Ok, that's that. Our next option is for the map style. And if you look at this note below, you can see that the map style field accepts JSON code generated on the Snazzy Maps site. Snazzy Maps is an online tool that allows you to style a Google map any way you like. I'll leave you a link to it in the description below. Ok. This is its front page, and I'm already logged in. I took the time to style my map ahead of filming so we don't waste time now. Since this is a third party service, I just want to give you an idea of how it looks. It's very intuitive and easy to use. 
but you can check out the Snazzy Maps help section if you have any difficulty styling your map. So, what you do once you've logged in is go to the Create a Style, and then you can use the options on the left to adjust how your map will look. You can choose your colors for the water areas and for the ground areas as well. You can play around with these settings, they are, as I've already said, pretty intuitive. When you're ready, go to the Apply Style button. This will provide you with additional options on the left, which you can use. Once you're happy with the resulting map, you can click on this button here to view the code. Here we can see the code you'd need to copy and then add to the widget's map style field. And when you're copying it, make sure to select it all. As I've mentioned before, I prepared my map style ahead of filming and copied its code. So all I have to do now is paste it into this field. There we go. And we can immediately see how this has changed the map's look. That's actually the bulk of the work done. Below this, we have some options for making changes to different map features. For example, enable map dragging will allow users to grab and drag the map as a way of navigating across it. It works like this. If we turn it off, see? My cursor doesn't become a pointer once it's over the map, so the map itself is no longer clickable. I think this is a useful feature, so I'll set it back to yes. Alright. After that, we have the map scroll option. It's disabled by default, so when I scroll with my mouse over the map, all I get is the page moving. However, if I switch this to yes, then scrolling up and down will serve to respectively zoom in or zoom out the map view. I'll set this back to no. Next, we have the Enable Map Street View Control. It's enabled by default and it's what provides us with this icon here. If you turn it off, the icon will disappear. I'll leave it disabled for my map. Then there's the Enable Map Type Control. Keeping it enabled, it allows us to have these options for map display. I didn't do all that work to style my map only to have people switch it to satellite view, so I'll turn this off. And now we can see the buttons are gone from here. And we have one more option after this. It's the full screen control. That's this on the map. I'm going to turn that off as well. If you prefer, you can keep it on. It allows users to open the map in full screen. And that's mostly it in terms of the widget's options. The remaining two sections in the Content tab are something you get with all of our widgets. The first is the Developer Tools. It contains an option that can show the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, making it easy to copy for use elsewhere on your site. Alright. And the second one is the Help section. This is where you can find some helpful resources, such as the link to the widgets page, the key themes demos, the plugins documentation, and our help center. Now, the second tab we have here, Advanced, is one we usually skip as it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to any of the key add-ons widgets. However, it does have several useful options for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations, and more. And it's relevant to us now because it also contains the mask option. When we open that section and enable the option within it, several more options will appear. And the first of these options allows us to pick the shape of our element, in this case the map. The circle is at the top of the list and it's the one I want to use. There are all these other options for you to try out if you like. And there we have it. The design I wanted to make is done. The options under this one are all typical positioning options you get with images and visuals. And again, you get these with every elemental widget, so I don't think we need to go over them now. So with this, my map is actually done. I'll go and hit update to save my work. Okay, there we go. As you've seen, adding a map with a Google Map widget from the key add-ons for Elementor couldn't be simpler. And when you're ready to start adding your own maps, you can use the Google Map Widgets page for inspiration. If you like any of the examples here, you can use your browser's inspect tools to see what style settings we used and apply them to your own maps. Overall, we hope you found this tutorial on the Google Map Widgets from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin helpful, and that you'll start using it as an easier way to add maps to your site. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. 
Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thanks for watching!